In the years leading up to the COVID-19 pandemic, the UK demolition and construction industry appeared to be making steady progress in safety. Fatal and non-fatal accidents statistics were declining almost year on year. It seemed we'd finally turned a corner, we'd embraced better practices, we had more advanced training and an industry-wide commitment to ensure that every worker returned home safely at the end of their shift. And then came the pandemic, a seismic shift that shook every foundation we had. Social distancing, lockdowns and uncertainty swept across the globe, halting projects and throwing lives and industries into disarray. Yet construction, which was granted key worker status, carried on. We operated under new rules, with fewer workers on site and strict protocols in place. We managed, or so we thought. But what was the true cost of that resilience? Now, as we look back from a post-pandemic vantage point, the cracks in our survival strategy are beginning to show. Since the easing of lockdown restrictions, non-fatal accident rates have plateaued, no longer improving as they once did. And worse still, fatal accidents have surged. 51 lives lost in 2023 to 2024. 51 families shattered. And that's not just a number. It's almost five times the all-industry fatality rate and higher than the five-year average for our sector. So we're going to ask ourselves some uncomfortable questions. Are we suffering from a post-pandemic hangover, a lingering fog that clouds our decision-making, our priorities and our standards? Did the social distance days of COVID-19 hinder our ability to train workers effectively, leaving gaps in knowledge, skill and confidence? Are we now operating with skeleton crews, struggling to replace those we lost to other sectors during the upheaval? Or, most damning of all, are we cutting corners, sacrificing safety in a desperate bid to claw back the time and money that we lost during the pandemic? We're going to face a bitter truth. Survival during the pandemic definitely came at a price. The question now is who is paying it? The people at the sharp end of this industry, the ones in the hard hats, are paying with their bodies and their lives. We celebrated construction workers as heroes for keeping the nation running during its darkest days. But are we now treating them as expendable now that the immediate crisis has passed? Are we so focused on recovery metrics, project deadlines and profit margins that we've lost sight of the real human cost? The pandemic disrupted every facet of training and workforce development. Apprenticeships were delayed or cancelled. On-site mentoring all but disappeared as seasoned professionals were spread thin across projects or left the industry altogether. The hard-won transfer of knowledge, how to navigate risk, how to read the subtle warning signs that machines or materials might fall, it's all interrupted. And while training has resumed, the sense of urgency seems to have faded. It's as if we've collectively decided to make do rather than address the gaps head on. And then there's the workforce itself. Construction is a physically demanding and often mentally draining profession. Many left during the pandemic, whether for more stable industries, remote work opportunities, or simply out of frustration with the chaotic stop-start nature of projects. Those who remain are frequently overworked, stretched too thin to focus properly on safety. And when focus slips in this industry, the consequences are immediate and devastating. Let's not forget the financial pressures squeezing every corner of the sector. During the pandemic, delays, increased costs and supply chain disruptions pushed many companies to the brink. In the aftermath, the race to recover has been almost relentless. The push for faster turnarounds and reduced costs is unremitting. And safety? Too often it's treated as a luxury that can be shaved down when budgets tighten. But safety isn't a line item. It's the difference between life and death. Now, some might argue that this is just a phase, that the industry will rebound and adjust with time. But what if this isn't just a temporary glitch or a setback? What if the, the pandemic didn't just delay our progress, but actually unraveled years of hard-won gains? We're at a crossroads. The question is not just about recovering lost time or money. It's about recovering our sense of responsibility. The pandemic was a once-in-a-century event, but accidents are not. They're preventable. They occur when we let complacency, negligence or greed take precedence over precaution. It's time for an honest reckoning. 
Have we allowed the, narr the narrative of resilience to blind us to the reality of our current situation? Are we so focused on celebrating how we made it through the pandemic that we're ignoring the toll it continues to take? The answers won't come easily. They require some uncomfortable conversations in boardrooms and on job sites. They require us to confront the decisions we've made and the priorities we've set. Are we willing to invest in retraining programs, knowing that they take time and resources that might not yield immediate returns? Are we prepared to re-examine staffing levels and ensure that every site is adequately supported, even if that means slower progress? Are we brave enough to admit that cutting corners is a short-term gain ahead of a long-term tragedy? The, the pandemic tested our resilience. Now the recovery is testing our humanity. How we respond will define the future of this industry. Will we, will we continue down the path of complacency, accepting these fatalities as the cost of doing business? Or will we draw a line in the sand and say, no more? Because every life lost is more than just a statistic. It's a worker who didn't make it home. It's a family left grieving. It's a preventable tragedy in an industry that should and did know better. UK construction made it through the pandemic with its key worker status intact. But survival is not the same as success. And if we're paying the price now, we owe it to every worker, every family and every community to ask why and to ensure that we never have to pay again.